this is a bear called Zebedee who came from a terrible background um, he was kept in sort of a kitchen area on this bear farm completely in the dark and he'd also been badly abused by the farmer who had smacked him over the muzzle over his nose with a plank and had broken his nose so our vet team managed to patch him up and, and he's doing well now but yeah it's just another example of how this industry really breaks our bears. I was working then for the International Fund for Animal Welfare as their Asia representative. So I would be doing a lot of undercover investigations. On this particular day, I had a call from a journalist friend of mine who had just come back from seeing one of these notorious bear farms in China. At that time, very little was known about them, but I just felt I had to go along and have a look for myself. So myself and a couple of friends went along. We joined a tour group of Taiwanese and Japanese tourists and um, we were shown around the bear bile farm in southern China. We knew that something terrible was happening to the bears themselves to create that bile. So we walked away from the tour group and we went down some stairs into a basement and we came across this shocking scene of 32 bears in tiny wire cages with metal catheters sticking out of their abdomens which extracts their bile. They were in cages so small that they were actually growing into the cage bars. And there was just one particular moment as I was walking around that awful room in such shock um, when I obviously backed into a cage too closely and um, something brushed my shoulder and I turned around and a, a female moon bear had her paw through the bars of the cage and I, I don't remember even thinking twice, which I would today. I took her paw and she didn't hurt me and she should have hurt me as a member of the human species but she just squeezed my fingers and um, and I just remember a message going through us, you know, between us. It just changed everything about my life and I, I left that farm, I think knowing at that time that I probably wouldn't see her again and I never did. I just gave my promise that, that I would try to help, if not her, the bears that were being put in that situation. And that was really the reason why several years later Animals Asia was founded, to specifically address the terrible industry of bear bar farming and to look at um, the issue of dog and cat consumption and captive animal welfare as well. And here we are today, you know, nearly 20 years later, with, I think, our promise kept. The uh, Vietnam Bear Rescue Centre is a project um, between Animal Asia and the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development of Vietnam. This is a joint project to help the uh, Vietnamese official uh, to enforce the law, uh, because before this uh, this centre was developed, uh, every time an official um, come across an illegal bear farm or uh, someone illegally taking bear from the from the forest, uh, they don't really know what to do with the bears. Uh, who would look after them? Uh, they don't have the resource. They don't have the expertise. So the main purpose of this centre is to to help the government to enforce the law and uh, for Animal Asia to rescue as many bear we can from bear farm and illegal trading and then try to get the bear back to their normal health again. Unfortunately now in Vietnam uh, we still have around a thousand bears uh, being kept on what we call bear farms. So I'm just about to load uh, Humphrey who is one of our Asiatic black bears uh, he's having a health check tomorrow, so I'm going to ask him to enter um, a small cage on wheels and um, he'll go on that across to our health check room, ready for tomorrow. We have 170 bears uh, here living with us, so it's quite a large facility. Um, the majority of the bears that are living with us are Asiatic black bears or moon bears, and we also have uh, 11 sun bears or Malayan sun bears. There's lots of different types of enrichment. You know, we could give them smears, which they might go around and lick up. We can 
stimulate different senses as well so you might give them something that it makes noise we want to encourage the bears to display natural behaviors these toys it encourages them to forage we can put food up high on the structures and the enclosures to encourage them to climb because naturally these are behaviors that they would do in the wild These sanctuaries are really often described as food for the soul. You know, they just give the bears at least a future of living healthily and happily uh, in, you know, semi-naturalistic enclosures and allow the public to enjoy them as animals in the true sense of the word rather than as machines that were previously helping people for their body parts. Again, we should be more thoughtful to that species and um, stop using them, stop thinking of them as things when herbal and synthetic alternatives take the place of their bile and allow them to enjoy their lives in the forest. So each morning before the bears go outside, uh, if they need to have medication for any reason, the team give them their medication, usually in something really delicious like banana and honey. Oh. So for every resident bear that lives here at the sanctuary, we do a routine health check every two to three years. Um, and that's just to make sure that, you know, that we're not missing anything. We see the bears every day, they come forward, they are trained to, you know, come forward and for us to take a look. But there's things that we can't check consciously. When they're on bile farms, they have really poor nutrition, um, and so they can grow up with teeth that are weaker than normal. Last time he was checked, he had normal teeth, but today we found that his canine tooth is broken. Once the bears are rescued off of the bile farms, they will stay here for the rest of their lives. It's a promise that we've made to the bears to give them sanctuary and for them to be safe. One of the reasons that release isn't an option is that there's no forest that's protected in Vietnam. The other reason that we can't release them is um, we have a lot of bears in both China and Vietnam who have hypertension. So we're not really sure why that they develop this. We think it's because of just the chronic stress that they're under. But they need to be on blood pressure medication just like a person every day for the rest of their lives. The world needs to end bile farming. It's cruel. It's horrible. Um, it creates a product that is full of hatred, suffering, infections, cancer cells. It's dangerous for people to take it. Not only that, the animals suffer immensely. You can't even imagine how much they suffer and we don't need it. We have alternatives. Nobody needs bare bile. It shouldn't exist. We use this center to educate the public as well. Uh, we can show them uh, the bears that we rescue and also talk to them about you know, how the bears should be treated and how bears should be left alone in nature. I do see a lot of hope in Vietnam. Uh, if we can show these young people you know, what, what animals is and how they should be treated, um, then hopefully that will convince uh, their parents, uh, their, their elderly in their family of treat animal better. I'm surrounded by a team, you know, there's around 70 of us that live out here and work out here at the sanctuary, and there's 70 of the best people I've ever known in my entire life. The sanctuary here and in China and all of our other programs cost us unimaginable amounts of money every year. Uh, we do need support from the public uh, to raise the opinion, uh, because we as animal if we, we just want voice. 
And you see, you know, when we talk to government, they said, oh, well, it's you complaining. We don't hear anyone else complaining. So if we get a lot more people complaining with us, then we can change uh, what's happening in Vietnam. Please just go onto our website. Please go onto our Facebook pages. You know where to find us, Animals Asia. It's easy. Just help us. We, you know, we are, we are doing what we say on the tin. We are delivering the success stories of these animals each and every day. Um, but on a broader level, I love to just talk to people about how they can help the animal community across the world. You know, whether it's here in Asia or in your own backyard at home. And that is just to be thoughtful about the other one life that animals have in the same way that we have one life. It is as important to them as our one life is to us. There is no question about that. More and more science is coming out each year to talk about the physical and emotional integrity of animals, the fact that they can feel pain and suffering, the fact that they have emotions as profound as ours. And I think it just, as an intelligent species, we owe it, we owe it to be a compassionate species as well to other animals that we know feel pain. So don't go to circuses that have animals. It'd be very careful about the zoos that you go to. Just go to zoos that act as rescue centers as well and have true conservation at their heart. Look at the products you're buying. You know, women, if you're buying makeup, you know, go to the shops that we know sell cruelty-free products. Please just go vegan or even vegetarian for one or two days a week or more if you can. This is our chance to give the bears their best Christmas and to show them how and why we love them. Our hope is that you know we can replenish the forests as they were before and have people living harmoniously alongside wild species of bears and indeed other animals that inhabited this great continent of Asia. Yeah, go on. No, 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 no. He's gonna get the biscuits.